Welcome back from the ad break and let's continue with our lesson. Let's go on to the second concept on our concept map and that is the rhombus. Now, if you remember what a rhombus is, a rhombus is a special parallelogram. Now, when we defined a rhombus in the beginning, we said that it is a parallelogram that has all four sides to be equal. So let's look at now the angles of a rhombus and also the diagonals of a rhombus. So we already know that it is a special parallelogram. That means that all of the properties of a parallelogram apply to a rhombus as well. So the diagonals of a rhombus, they bisect the opposite angles. Now, if we remember, with a parallelogram, the opposite angles were equal. But now with a rhombus, the diagonals, they bisect the, those opposite angles. And then what, um, another thing about the diagonals is that they are perpendicular. Let's look at the properties of a rhombus. So when it comes to the sides, we know that KL is equals to NM as they are opposite sides. And we also know that KN is equals to LM. But remember, a rhombus is special because now all of the sides are equal. So that means that KL is equals to NM. And it also means that KL is also equals to LM, which also is equals to Kn. So all of those sides are equal. Then when it comes to the parallel sides, Kl is, is parallel to Nm because they are opposite sides there. And of course, a Kn is also parallel to Lm. Then when it comes to the angles, remember we said there that the opposite angles are equal. So that means that angle K is equal to angle M, which is that property of a parallelogram, which also applies to a rhombus. And of course, angle L is equal to angle N. So that angle N there will be equal to that angle L there. Now, when it comes to the diagonals, firstly, the diagonals also bisect each other. Now, the diagonals, we are talking about KM and also LN. And again, they are intersecting there at T. And because the diagonals bisect each other, we know that KT is equals to MT. And we know that LT is equals to NT. And in addition, because this is a rhombus, the diagonals, they bisect each other at 90 degrees. So KM is perpendicular to LN. And then what about the diagonals again? Those diagonals, they bisect the opposite angles. So this means that LN bisects angle N and angle L. So to bisect is to cut in half. That would mean that that angle and that angle are equal, which also means that angle L, that that angle there and that angle there is equal as well. And also the diagonal KM would be the one bisecting angle M and again bisecting angle K. And those are the properties of a rhombus. So if we wrap up those properties there, we can see that the opposite sides are parallel. So we have those there. Then we also see that the all the sides are equal. So these would be all of those sides there. Then the opposite angles are equal as shown. And also the diagonals, they bisect each other at 90 degrees. So not only do they cut each other in half, but they meet at 90 degrees as well. And lastly, the diagonals bisect the opposite angles as shown. Let's move on to the next concept on our concept map, and that is the kite. So when we are looking at the properties of a kite, now the diagonals of a kite, they intersect at 90 degrees, which means that they are perpendicular to each other. Now the diagonal, 
that is also the line of symmetry, it bisects the other diagonal. Now, let's see what we are talking about in that instance. So we have a kite here, a kite QRS. T. Now, what do we know about the sides of this kite? Well, we know that the adjacent, the adjacent sides are equal, or two pairs of adjacent sides are equal. In this case, we have a QT, which is equals to a QR, and that is the first pair of adjacent sides that are equal, and of course, the other pair is a TS with RS and those two are also equal over there. What about the angles? Now with the kite, we only have one pair of opposite angles that are equal. And that would be angle T over there and angle R over there. So those are the two opposite angles that are equal. Then we have our diagonals. Our first diagonal there is TR, and then our second diagonal is QS. And we can see where they are meeting. They meet at um, point A over there. And what did we say about the diagonals? Well, for starters, the diagonals, um, remember we said that the diagonal, that is also the line of symmetry, and in this case, it is QS. So that diagonal, it bisects the other diagonal, which means that TA is equals to RA, and that is what the diagonal does. In addition, the diagonals, they meet at 90 degrees, which means that QS being the one diagonal is perpendicular to TR being the other diagonal. So to wrap up those properties there, we can see that in a kite, there are two pairs of adjacent sides that are equal. One pair of opposite angles are equal, and the diagonal that is the axis of symmetry bisects the other diagonal at 90 degrees. And those are the properties of a kite. Let's move on now to the properties or to the next concept in our concept map, and that is the trapezium. So what do we know about a trapezium? Well, a trapezium has only one pair of parallel lines. The diagonals of a trapezium are not equal unless it is an isosceles trapezium. Now we are going to look at that isosceles trapezium after this one, but a trapezium has only one pair of parallel lines. And in this case, that would be a WX, which is parallel to YZ. So those two sides are parallel there. So with the trapezium, one pair of opposite sides are parallel. But what about if it's an isosceles trapezium? Now isosceles, you might remember, perhaps you are thinking of equal. Well, an isosceles trapezium has only one pair of parallel lines, right? It is only if the trapezium is an isosceles trapezium that we have the other pair of lines to be equal. So we have one pair of parallel lines and then that other pair that is not parallel, they would be equal only if it is a trapezium, sorry, if it is an isosceles trapezium. The angles formed by the one parallel side and the pair of equal sides are equal. Now, let's see what we mean concerning those lines and the angles. So there is a trapezium and concerning the sides, now we do know that Wx is equals, I mean, sorry, is parallel to Yz, but because this is an isosceles, because it's an isosceles trapezium, it also means that WZ is equals to XY. And this is only because it's an isosceles trapezium. Now, what about the angles? Angle Z and angle Y will be equal. Angle Z and angle Y will be equal. Why? Because they are opposite the equal sides. This also applies for angle W 
and angle X. So those two angles there will also be equal because they are opposite the equal sides. So when it comes to an isosceles trapezium, then we know that one pair of opposite sides are parallel, of course, and because it's an isosceles, then one pair of sides are equal as well. Now, that is not the only trapezium that we find. The last trapezium that we are going to look at is the right angled trapezium or the right trapezium. Now, when it comes to the side, sides, of course, DC will be a parallel to AB because in a trapezium, in any trapezium, we have one pair of parallel sides. Now, what about the angles? Now, when we are looking at the angles that we are given there, we can see that angle D is equals to angle A, and they are both equals to 90 degrees. So if we have a trapezium that has one 90 degree angle, then we will know that the other, or that there is a second 90 degree angle as well. And why is that? This is because of those parallel lines. Remember, co-interior angles, they form um, 180 degrees when added. So if one angle is already 90 degrees, then the other angle will also be 90 degrees because of the parallel lines. So when it comes to a right trapezium, of course, we know that one pair of opposite sides are a parallel and then one pair of angles are right angles as we can see over there. That is it about our quadrilaterals and I really hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I did. Thank you for joining us and we hope to see you next time. Goodbye.